Hi again everyone, it's Pastor John here from Napanee Baptist Church and it's good to be with you again. It's Wednesday, September the 8th. I hope you're doing well, hope you're keeping well as we start a new school year and I was walking again uh, the other day and the school buses were all out and people are all going back and the kids are all excited, some of them, <laughs> about going back to school. So it, we're starting up again and things are looking good for our church as well. Uh, so please be in prayer for the future and for our church family. We would really appreciate that. I'm glad you could join me today. We're doing a little study in the book of 1 Timothy. So our reading today is from 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 12 to the end of the chapter. 1 Timothy chapter 1, from verses 12 to the end of the chapter. Verse 12, it says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Verse 14, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Verse 17, now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Verse 18, Timothy, my son, I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well, holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith. Verse 20, among them are Hermenius and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. Well, the, the verse that I'd like to draw your attention to is, um, of course, verse 15 is really a summary of the Christian gospel in verse 15. Paul says, here is a trustworthy saying and that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's what our gospel is. That's what our good news is. That's it in a nutshell. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul says that he was the worst. And then in the previous verse, uh, verse 14, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. That's the essence of what we believe is that God pours his love out. He pours his mercy out and he saves us. It's him who does the saving, not us, because we are sinners. We are separated from him. Christ came to save, to save us, to die for us and to reconcile us back to God. I really like verse 16 as well. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy. What reason? The reason being that he was the worst of sinners. He was a persecutor. And uh, he rebelled against God. And he uh, arrested Christians. And he was running away from God. He calls himself the worst of the worst. Because of that, God had to show a lot of mercy. Great mercy. Verse 16, but for that very reason I was shown mercy so that in me, 
the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe. What does that really mean? Well, that means when we are saved, when Jesus comes in to our hearts and lives and his Holy Spirit changes us and we're born again, we're regenerated, we're transformed, that is such an example. That is such a an indication and proof that God is real and that God shows mercy to sinners in the lives that are changed through him doing that. And that can be such a great witness when we see lives being changed uh, by God and even for our own experiences and our own testimonies. That's what keeps me going in the faith is I look back over my life and I see how much God has worked in my life and brought me to this point and has transformed me in many ways and what I would be like if he hadn't saved me, if he hadn't sought me out and chosen me. I would be totally lost. I'd be right along there with Paul, the worst of sinners. So just an encouragement, as believers today, we have so much to be thankful for because God has done a work, He is doing a work in our lives, and He will continue it on. And as far as our church is concerned, it's amazing what God is doing in the lives of individuals. So keep looking up, keep being encouraged, and let's keep meeting together in this way and praying together. And if you're able, please come out to a Bible study at the church or on Sunday mornings. We would love to see you. So let's pray and commit our day to him. Father, we thank you for this new day. And we would pray that you would draw near to us, to each one watching today. And I pray that you would meet each need. Help us to be reassured that you are still working in our lives and you're still showing us mercy the same way that you showed Paul mercy so long ago, in spite of him being the worst of sinners. And Lord, help us to celebrate that and to um, be excited about your grace and your mercy being active in our lives daily. And I know each person who is a believer today who's watching has that same story, that same testimony. So Lord, help us to share that with others because from this passage, that becomes such a great example to those around us. That shows the reality of Christianity and the reality of a changed life in Jesus. So we just want to commit ourselves to you now, Lord. We thank you for this new day. Bless each one. Bless our church family. And bring us together again tomorrow rejoicing. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Take care. Bye-bye.